Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my humble 40k channel. Today we are going to go over one of the new Necron models that recently came out, Illuminor Sezraz? I know I butchered that name, but it's an undead alien so I don't really care. This guy got a chunky new model due to the recent Psychic Awakening and this video will go over how to paint him in an amazing 35 colors. And did I say amazing? I really meant terrifying as this model took forever. I went into this thinking Necrons were easy to paint, but no, you know, GW had to prove me wrong. In any case, the list of colors in order of application are down below as always. Let's get started. First, going with a primer, using Vallejo Gray for this, mainly just to try it out. Definitely sprays on much easier than Vallejo White does. I have the model in multiple sub-assemblies for ease of painting as a lot of the arms can get in the way if everything is assembled. Only the two shoulder pads are not primed in this step. Like the rest of the videos I've done, you don't need an airbrush for this, but I do find that it makes the end result much smoother than the regular traditional painting method. Sikorix Bronze is next. I don't know, look it up in the description down below. This color is done on all of the gray primed areas. Then for the last of the priming, we're going to use Vallejo Black on the two shoulder pads, and we're also going to cover the blades on the staff that he's packing. Speaking of the blades, one thing I did early on, as I had the airbrush out, is to get most of the work on the blades done right now. This is mainly that traditional Necron glow that you see in most of the box art. Now there's many ways and many tutorials on how to get that Necron glow, but for what I did in this video was I started with Warpstone Glow from the airbrush specifically and heavily covered most of the blades. Not all of it, as I want some of that black to show through for later steps. After that, with the airbrush again, I used Moot Green. Here, I'm only lightly hitting maybe 50% of the covered green areas, lightly covering them all, and I'm only really focusing on the edges around the blade area. Lastly, for the blades, I mixed Moot Green with Vallejo White. I used a lot of Vallejo White here, probably a mix of four to one white to green, maybe five to one white to green. I didn't measure it exactly. So I use this again through the air spray on the blades and really only just tapping those tips so that way it has a nice bright highlight all around the cutting edges. Now putting the airbrush away for the rest of this model, I went with Iron Breaker for the head and tabard like thingy that's between his legs. This is more to separate the core model from the armor and the legs, which will be much darker. Then a bat in black for the top parts of the legs, the joints in the arms, any parts of the model that is not armored, like his hands, his fingers, his forearms, things like that, and also the back of his head. I used Lead Belcher to cover the four legs and the metal bits on the staff and the shoulder piece with the crescent on it. On the same shoulder piece, I used Sotek Green to paint whatever doohickey is on there, plus the crystals on the staff. Moving on to the Inquisitor Victim, I painted the whole model in Wraithbone, plus the geyser that's spouting out of the model. This is mainly a preparatory step for later paints. Don't forget some of the spindly parts near the hands that are sucking in that blood. For the rest of the green glowy areas, not covered, I base them in Warpstone Glow. 
For all of the blood that's gushing out, I started with Flesh Terrors Red, which is a contrast paint. A bit darker than I expected, but still overall decent. I covered the entire geyser of blood with it. While that was drying, I used Xerus Purple to paint the blood near the hands. Once the contrast paint was nice and dry, I used Magos Purple in multiple coats to basically touch up the blood. This is more to create a gradient between the dark red to a nice dark purple, that, so that way it starts to match what's near the hands. You wanna do this in multiple thin coats and you want to apply the coats more towards the top. You do say one coat, maybe 50% of the way down, next coat, maybe 40% of the way down, and the 30%, the 20%, however you wanna gauge it. On the Inquisitor, I used Xandri Dust for the paints and wrappings on the purity seals. Then Rhinox Hide for the boots and gun holster. Balthasar Gold for the Inquisitor's armor. Cadian Flesh Tone on the poor man's face. Abaddon Black for the cables around the man's neck. Lead Belcher on the holster and vents on the back of the armor and front. Gray Seer on the exposed bones. Mephiston Red on the purity seals and the ribbons near the holster. Rune Lord Brass on all the trim for the Inquisitor's armor to make it just stand out a little bit. And for the last base coat, Retributor Gold for the small Aquila that the Inquisitor's holding and on the end of the ribbons near the holster. All right, the base paints are done. Moving on to the shading portion, of which there are three, we are going to start with Reichlin Flesh Shade on the Doomed Man's skin. I used the gloss version for this just to see what the results would be, but feel free to use whichever one suits you. Then is Agrax Earthshade Gloss on all of the bronze armor and the rest of the Inquisitor, excluding his bone hands. And again, you don't need to use the gloss version. I was doing it mainly to see what would happen. Then Nuln Oil on all of the silver metal, the doohickey on his shoulder pad, and the purple blood and the bone. At this point, if you want to call it a day, by all means, do so. You're at what GW would call battle ready, which is plenty for tabletop gaming. If you want to take it a bit further though, to what they call parade ready, we need to do the much dreaded highlights, of which I use 12 bloody colors. Thankfully, most of these are very quick to apply. First highlight is Baraknar Burgundy on the purple blood by the hands. Then Cabalite Green on the weird doohickey on his shoulder and the crystals on the staff. For the face of the Inquisitor, I used Cadian Flesh Tone again to brighten it back up, leaving the darkest recesses as is. For all the glowy Necron green areas, not on the blades themselves, I covered them in Moot Green, not entirely covering it, but say about 80 to 90 percent. On the boots and holster, I used Gorthor Brown. 
covering the entire parchment for the purity seals, I used Ushapti bone, and I also used it as an edge highlight for the pants. For the bone, I used Ulthuan gray, leaving the darkest recesses areas shaded. Now this part was new for me. I used Screaming Skull to edge highlight the blades themselves. I didn't think it would look pretty good, but honestly, I'm kind of surprised by the result. Moving on to the back that's part of the model's actual body. I used Administratum Gray to highlight the fingers, the joints, etc. Also, with the new camera holder, these images should be better resolution going forward. For all the black that is not tied to the model directly, like the shoulder pads and the tops of his legs, I edged with Incubi Darkness. This is a very dark highlight, so it will be barely visible. On top of the last step, Thunderhawk Blue was used to brighten it up even further. I tried to concentrate this on just the corners, but overall I simply covered most of the Incubi Darkness since it was a bit too dark and I wanted this to stand out. Last and least of all, the step I dreaded the most doing is Stormhole Silver on all of his metal bits. As you can see, he's got a lot of edges everywhere on the model that are covered in some type of metallic paint. You don't necessarily need to hit every single piece, but at a minimum, you want to concentrate on his armor because that's where you have a lot of brass together and the edge highlight's gonna break up that brass so that way everything stands out much more. And that's it. It took forever, but I think in the end, the result is pretty decent. I hope this video was useful to you. And as mentioned, all the paints in order of application are down in the description below. I'm not sure if I'm going to put it on the actual tabletop yet, but for now it'll sit in my curio cabinet with the rest of the models I've painted for this channel. Have a good one everyone, and I'll see you next video.